Today we're going to take a look at how to use a pop-up in Bubble, both as a regular pop-up and as a bottom sheet when your user views your site in mobile. My name is Michael Collins. I occasionally post tips and tricks, mostly on front-end stuff with Bubble or other non-Bubble stuff as well. So first thing that we want to do is make sure that we have our Classify plugin installed. So if you go to Plugins and go Add Plugins and then search for Classify, you'll want to install that. And then go to Settings and under General, you want to scroll all the way down to the bottom and make sure that this exposed the option to add an ID to HTML elements is checked. So then let's go back to the page and we're going to be using the page that I've been using for the last couple of videos. It's the one with the repeating group that switches from row to column once it goes down to mobile and then the cards also switch from column to row to back to column. And we'll add a pop-up to it and attach it to the card button. So the first thing we want to do is add a pop-up. So drag that onto the page and we can call this card info. And I've already styled the standard, standard pop-up style but it's really easy to do that. So if you click Edit Style on your Appearance tab, it brings you to the Element Styles section, and you'll see that we have the same thing here. We have Appearance, Layout, and Conditional. So in the pop-up, I changed the roundness from, I believe it was 8 to 16, and changed the background, the gray out, color and the shadow. In layout I've added some padding. In this case it's 32. So then let's go back to the page. And the only thing left to do on the appearance tab is go down all the way down to the bottom to the ID attribute. Click in the box. Open curly bracket. Add class with the capital C, all one word, colon, space, open quote, pop over, close quote, close curly bracket. Now this pop over, you could use a different name if you don't like that name, as long as you remember what it's for. So then let's go to layout. And on the layout, I'm gonna change this to a column. I'm gonna add a row gap of 32 and I'm going to uncheck make this element fixed width. I'm going to set the max width to 480. I'll leave the min width to 320. You can always change that <coughs> when you do testing to see if that's the width that works for you. You can always make it smaller like 280. The min height I'm going to leave for now, but we can change that to 10 later on once we add content to it. So you'll see that the padding is already there. I now want to go to conditional. I want to define another condition. I want to click on when and then page, type in page, select current page with is less than or equal to, in this case, it's going to be 768. <coughs> so now that I've done that, I want to take the max width when it gets to that point, and I want to set it to infinite width so that it stretches to the entire width of the canvas, whether it's 768 or 320. And then I want to change the padding. So we'll bring in top padding, left padding, bottom padding, 
right padding, the bottom padding, I want it to be more. So I'm going to set it to 48. So that way there is some space on the bottom. And then the rest of them I'm changing to 24. So we're going from 32 to 24 once it gets equal or below 768. Okay. Now that is all of step one. So now step two is to go to the style sheet and add our style. If you, this is the first time you're here doing this, you want to drag on an HTML element onto the page and the higher up that you can get it in the element tree, the better. And then we'll click on that element and under the appearance tab, we'll go to HTML editor. And if this, there's nothing there, you'll want to add your opening and closing style tags. Actually, let me make this bigger. So now we can then add our, our style to, between the tags. So at media screen and open bracket max hyphen width colon 768 pixels or px close bracket space open curly bracket we now want to put in our class that we've assigned so dot pop over space open curly bracket return and we want to set the top to auto so top colon auto and because we want this to override the style that's already there we need to add our exclamation mark important important tent, tent. <laughs> semicolon a return and then we want this to stick to the bottom, so we need to put in bottom colon zero pixels px space exclamation mark important semicolon. And now we want to change the bottom corners to zero so that it looks like it's coming up from the bottom or that it really belongs on the bottom. So border hyphen radius colon 16 px space 16 px space 0 px space 0 px space exclamation mark in poor tent. Now I put it on the style sheet instead of doing it in the conditional because I tried it the other way around and it wasn't being consistent for me and this way it is consistent. So in the width we need to add width colon and then we need to do a calc, open bracket, 100% space, the minus sign, space, 0, P, X. Close bracket, exclamation mark, important. Because if we just looked at the code that's there now, because they want this to be a pop-up, what they have is with calc 100% minus 20 pixels, so that there's a 20 pixel margin all around. We don't want that. Sorry, 20 pixel margin on each side. 
we don't want that. So we want to have it stretch to each side once it's down to the mobile size. So that's how we do that. And then we want to close our curly bracket. That's for the popover. And then we want to close our curly bracket and that's for the media. So let's save this. And what we now have to do is we have to attach it to this button so that we can get it to open. So we want to select the card button, go to add workflow. And we can do it two ways. The first one we're going to do show pop-up card info only when current page width is greater than 768. So then we're going to do another one. So click here to add an action. We'll go to element actions and we're going to animate the pop-up card. We're going to go down to no bounce up in. or slide up, transition slide up in. Let's do try that one. Only when current page width is less than or equal to 768. So we have our action when it's on the desktop so that it's going to act like the the pop-up normally does and then when it's down in the mobile view it's going to slide up so let's go take a look so let's refresh the page we'll click on the button and here's our pop-up and if I make this smaller pop-up is down here so let's click off that and it slides up it's not that fast so I'm going to try the other one so let's go back to workflow animate and we'll do the tr transition no bounce up in So let's take a look at that one. I like that one better. It slides up. And there you have it. That's it. So all you have to do is add whatever you are looking to add to your pop-up. You know, in this case, on the index page, I did it as the sign-up. And so there you have it. Thank you very much. I'll put the description on how to do this and I'll put the instructions in the description below. Thank you.